The monitor defibrillator is a relatively simple device. It does two things. It receives electrical signal from the patient, which is displayed on the screen as an ECG tracing. And it can send electrical energy through the chest wall to the heart. Every device has the same basic controls. We will start with the cables. Power cable. Monitor defibrillators run on battery power during most emergencies. In order to keep those batteries charged up and ready for action, the device must be plugged into wall power supply on a regular basis. Next up, we have limb leads. This particular setup has three limb leads which attach to the patient's chest wall in the normal fashion. Some limb lead sets will have leads for four or five connections on the patient's skin. Last but not least, we have cables for hands-free pads. In the hospital, these pads go to white, square, or rectangular pads that would attach to the patient's chest wall. Here in the sim lab, we have these adapter pins that go onto corresponding nubs on the patient's chest. We will now move on to the controls on the defibrillator. Let's review the various buttons and dials that control the monitor defibrillator. They are clearly labeled. In many instances, they also are numbered one, two, and three to help guide you through the order in which they should be operated. Let's start with the dial that corresponds with number one. This turns the device on and selects one of three modes, monitor, defibrillator, or pacer. When we switch into monitor mode, the unit is going to look for cables attached to the patient. You should have them attached already. Depending on the make and model of the unit, it may default to looking for the hands-free pads. The rationale for that is, since it is a monitor defibrillator, the manufacturer assumes that you're using it in an emergency and will use the hands-free pads. You should be familiar with your own equipment to know whether it will default into hands-free pad mode or the limb lead mode. Check pads. Our device, as I said, defaults into hands-free pad mode. I can switch it to limb leads by using the lead selector button and pressing it once for lead one, a second time for lead two, and a third time for lead three. Turning the dial to Check pads. the uh, position labeled defibrillator will now again default to the hands-free pad mode since that's what we're going to use to perform the electrical intervention. And the same applies if we switched it into pacer mode. Moving on to the other numbered controls, they, because they are in red, pertain to the defibrillation and cardioversion functions of the device. When I switch it into defib mode, I'm in that red area, number one, defib. Next up would be step two, and that's to select an energy. This button, by pressing it up, makes the energy level go up and by pressing it down, makes it go down. It is your responsibility to know the appropriate energy setting. Moving up in the module here on the right side of the device is the charge button. When I press the charge button, it's going to charge up to the energy setting that I selected using the up and down arrows. And when it is ready, the red light and an audible tone will occur, letting you know that the device can be discharged. At this point, I would either defibrillate the patient or I would dump the charge by switching it out of defibrillator mode. Next up are the controls to perform synchronized cardioversion. When I switch the device from monitor mode to defibrillator mode, these soft buttons along the lower edge of the device become active 
and one of those soft buttons is to turn on or off synchronization. By pressing the soft button, I will turn on the sync and I should start to see markers associated with the QRS complex. The last control we have to concern ourselves with is the pacemaker controls. By switching the dial down to pacemaker, we will see the patient's rhythm and then down along the bottom we have different functions associated with the soft buttons. One of them is to turn on or off asynchronous pacing. Along with the dial to put the pacemaker into pacemaker mode, we have two dials beneath it. One is an output dial, and when we rotate the output dial, it moves the milliamperage up or down. And then next to that dial is a rate dial that moves the rate up or down. You are responsible for determining an appropriate energy setting to start at, and a target heart rate for the patient.